In this video, I'm going to show you how to apply the finger tape onto your fingerboard. The finger tape is an invaluable tool for a beginner. It helps you to find the right notes without too much effort until you get more confidence with your ear and you can hear those little finite differences in pitch and until you develop good habits with your left hand so that they sort of know where they're going without any help, okay? And you can buy a template for your fingerboard. Um, I've never seen one in person, but a couple of my students got some and they showed me on video and they're pretty neat. It's a sticker that goes on the full length of your fingerboard, easy to install, and it tells you where all the notes are on all the strings. Okay, and my students really did, really liked them. The problem with them is that you have to look all the time at your fingerboard because they're, they're slip, slippery. It's just one big sticker. With finger tapes, you can feel the edge of the tape with your finger, so you don't always need your eyes to find the right note. Either way, eventually you want your ear to find the right note, and you want your fingers to sort of know where they're going. So whichever tool you decide to use, I highly recommend that you use a tool on your fingerboard to help you find the notes for about till the, you know, the minuets or the end of the minuets of book one. At that time, you will have developed some good ear training and some good tactile training, and you'll be able to start getting rid of your tapes one at a time. And most of my students figure out when that time is on their own. You will probably start to recognize when you don't need your tapes anymore. So this kind of tape you can use is, I highly recommend going to an auto parts store and just buy some pinstriping. It's the perfect size and it's cheap and you can get any color. This is one eighth pinstriping. They sell it in fatter varieties, but you want the one eighth. It's the perfect size. When I went to Napa, they didn't have white. So I bought red and I don't like red as well because it doesn't show up as well. Um, I do have this white tape here I got it a long time ago. It's a, a graphic artist's tape. And I really, it's really hard to find and it's expensive. I just don't like it as well as the pinstriping. So really my first choice is pinstriping. But I'm gonna use the white because it's easiest to see. So I've cut my little tapes in advance. You can see them here, one, two, three, four. Um, I like them a little bit longer because I do like them to wrap around the neck a little bit. I don't like them to end right on the edge of the fingerboard. I like them coming down onto the maple. Okay, You can start with any string. Um, I choose one of the middle strings, A or D, just because they're in the middle. They're a little easier to deal with. We're going to do A. So the first note up from A would be first finger and that is B. So take your tone generator or a piano and find the note B. Okay, remember that pitch. That's part of ear training is being able to remember a pitch. Take your tape. Um, now the shortest tape I use on the first finger because the neck is narrow down here and it gets wider. So I've got this shorter tape, which I'm going to use for my first finger. Do you remember that pitch that I just played for you? Okay, you got to thread the tape underneath all four strings. Just work it under. Some people need tweezers to get this done. Uh, with practice, you can do it without tweezers. But if you need to, use tweezers. Also, threading it under the strings up high. Up here is easier because the strings are higher off the fingerboard. They get really close to the fingerboard down here. Okay, so make it easy on yourself. Thread them under, then slide it down to a good fat inch. 
an inch above the nut. Okay, and that's gonna be in the ballpark. Okay, how's your pitch memory going? And you can keep your tone on the whole time if you want, it just drives me crazy. You can turn it softly. But we nailed it. So then, I press the edges down onto the neck. Okay. Now, one thing to be extremely diligent about is to make sure the tape is straight, parallel to the nut. A lot of times I've made this mistake, I get it slanted, a little bit crooked, and that's going to be just totally inaccurate. So make sure it's exactly parallel to the nut. Okay? All right, the second note up is second finger, and that's called C sharp. So, find C sharp, and we'll keep it on. Grab another piece of tape, thread it under, and work it on down for about another good fat inch. That's flat. So I've got to untack it and move it up, maybe three hairs, maybe four hairs. There. Check it, make sure it's straight. And it is. Ooh, I should have checked it before I tacked those down. It's good. So we have A, B, C sharp. <laughs> that second finger is a hair too high, but I'm going to leave it. The next note up is a half step. D. Third finger tape. So thread this one through, and on the third tape, you're going to want about a, just a half inch. Okay, let's test it. Let's check with our tone generator. Ooh, sounds good. Little hair too low. And by hair, I mean a hair. That's it. Okay, and I always put a fourth finger tape on for my beginners. Um, you don't need it at first, but I like to encourage my students to use their fourth finger early. Because we tend to baby the fourth finger and we don't use it, and so then he's always weaker than the others. We want to use him and treat him like an equal. So, the next note up is a whole step, and it is E. Okay. It's a whole step, so it's about another fat inch. And that's easy because it matches your E string. And I got it right on the money. Okay, there's your finger tapes. Give them a good inspection. Make sure they're all straight and that none of them are going cattywampus like that or like that. And these look pretty darn good. That's all there is to it. It's not too hard. Um, definitely worth the effort of putting them on your fingerboard. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next video.